Hi everybody, uh, welcome to our uh, new lecture on uh, 5G and uh, my apologies uh, for uh, recording this video a bit uh, uh, with a bit of delay again but today uh, we are discussing a very interesting topic in 5G and that is a millimeter wave. Millimeter wave is uh, actually one of the candidate uh, technologies in 5G which uh, will be used and is also being currently being used in many trials to give a throughput in the range of uh, tens of gigabits for example in 4 gigabit 5 gigabit uh, per second throughput and this is a technology uh, which uh, 5G relies on to give a very high throughputs and very low latency in some cases as well so we will discuss this in detail uh, in terms of uh, three things uh, number one is uh, the frequency how what is the frequency and how this frequency basically uh, affects a millimeter wave and number two then uh, we will have the deployment deployment scenarios and number three will be the frame structure So, uh, as you know, uh, 5G specifications uh, from 3GPP uh, divide 5G and are into two categories. Number one is FR1 and the second is FR2. So, FR1 are your sub 6 gigahertz frequencies and the majority of the deployments right now all over the world are in the sub gigahertz ranges, mostly in the mid bands or in the high bands around 3.5 or uh, you can say 2.3, 2.5, some are in the low band as well. But the majority of the 5G which has been deployed is in the sub 6 gigahertz. There are some, uh, however, cases where 5G has been deployed in the FR2 and I will write it here FR1 and FR2. So this FR2 basically deals with a uh, millimeter wave and the frequency ranges in this FR2 in the release 15 uh, like 3GPP uh, <coughs> releases specifications uh, after a set of uh, standardization and the frequency ranges in release 15 for this was from 20 gigahertz to around 53 gigahertz. Now you note that 20 gigahertz is way higher when you compare it with 3.5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz from FR1. So when talking about millimeter wave, we are talking about very high frequencies and where the millimeter wave name comes from and that is from the wavelength so if you remember the formula which we all studied in our uh, physics class that is c is equal to f lambda so lambda is equal to c by f where c is the speed of light and f is your frequency so if you use these frequencies from 20 uh, gigahertz to 53 gigahertz the range of wavelength that you will get is from 10 millimeter to around 1 millimeter. This 1 millimeter is basically for frequencies which gain around 300 gigahertz that are very high. So you are going towards infrared and stuff like that. But this is where uh, the name comes from that <coughs> your millimeter wave has very low wavelength and very high frequency. Now with such uh, a high frequency and a low wave, uh, very low wavelength, there are some deployment scenarios for millimeter wave. The first thing is propagation. With such high frequencies, the propagation loss in millimeter wave is very, very high. So for example, if you are transmitting at 300 gigahertz, for example, you will have an 88 dB loss for just 10 meters. So that is just an example, a, a layman figure, but just an example of the amount of propagation loss that you will suffer with millimeter waves. Secondly, uh, they also observe, experience absorption. For example, if they are near, near a water body or they are near uh, a certain amount of gases, even oxygen. Millimeter waves have a lot of absorption effect and therefore that also leads to their uh, 
low propagation distances. And number three is the design, the design of electronics that can deal with uh, transmitting and receiving uh, millimeter wave waves because at such low wavelength and at such high frequency, the design of electronics becomes very complicated. And as you see that right now in 2021, there are very few devices almost in, in the mobile space, there is not much of a device which can deal with millimeter wave wave. And for your home internet devices, there are certain devices which you can use millimeter wave, especially in the US, there have been deployments for the fixed wireless access using millimeter wave. But the penetration right now is very low because of the limitation on the device end. One bright side coming from the deployment side is that if you remember that the antenna size dipole, for example, the antenna size is usually given by lambda by two. And lambda here is your wavelength. So for frequencies around 900 megahertz, 18 mega, 1800 megahertz, or even in the sub uh, 6 gigahertz range, this lambda is in a range of centimeters. So your antenna is usually has a certain amount of length. But if you consider millimeter waves, the antenna length is in millimeters. So you can have very compact transmitting devices and very compact receiving devices when it comes to millimeter waves. The challenge, however, lies in the frequency part. And what is the challenge? All of you must have heard the concept of Doppler, Doppler spread. So at such high frequencies, the Doppler spread becomes very sensitive to the movement of transmitter and the receiver. So the frequency spread that can be created by just a small movement of your transmitter and your receiver will cause a lot of problems in terms of receiving a particular signal. So in millimeter waves, it is preferred uh, that we do not have much uh, speed or much, uh, you can say, movement of the transmitter and receiver and therefore if you consider mobility uh, aspects into millimeter wave that makes it more complicated and that's why in majority of the uh, the world right now millimeter wave is being used for the fixed wireless access another thing uh, that can come in the uh, deployment scenario is where to actually deploy the millimeter wave and that is uh, basically uh, decided uh, the the range and the cell range usually does not go beyond, uh, you can say 250 meters or 500 meters. So considering all the absorption propagation, we can decide upon a certain areas in our network where we can deploy a millimeter wave. The third part is the frame structure. And here comes the beauty of 5G new radio specifications. In order to cater for uh, the frequency behavior of uh, millimeter wave that is very sensitive to uh, frequency uh, in terms of bandwidth, the 5G millimeter wave is only allowed to operate with a subcarrier spacing of 60 kilohertz and 120 kilohertz. I'll try it. So if you remember in uh, our previous lectures, there are multiple subcarrier uh, spacing available in 5G. So that is 15, 30, 60, 120 and 240. Now these upper three are limited for your sub 6 gigahertz. And these lower three are available for your millimeter wave. So the millimeter wave can operate between 60, 120 and 240. And then another complication uh, occurs that this 240 is basically not available for your PDSCH. So this much of subcarrier spacing is not allowed for your physical downlink shared channel. So the major deployments 
of millimeter wave will occur in the 60 and 120 kilohertz of subcarrier spacing. Now, when you come to subcarrier spacing 60 and 120 uh, kilohertz, then you talk about uh, the bandwidth. So, in millimeter wave, uh, that FR2, the carrier bandwidth. So, for carrier bandwidth, I will give you the example of LTE. For example, in LTE, the carrier bandwidth was 1.4, 3, 5, 15, 10, 15, 20. For millimeter wave, we have the carrier bandwidth of 50, 100, 200, and 400 megahertz. So you can see that large number of carrier bandwidths is available in a millimeter wave. And when you aggregate these bandwidths, you can easily get 400, 800 megahertz of carrier aggregated for a particular user. And you can imagine the amount of throughput that you can get with these kind of uh, uh, carrier bandwidths. And when you come to resource blocks, then you have your, this is your uh, subcarrier spacing. This is the other subcarrier sub spacing. So the 61 starts from 32, you can see. it's 66, 132, then you have 264. This one starts from 33, 66, 132, and so on. And on top of here, is your bandwidth. So this is 50, this is 100, 200, and 400. 400 is not allowed for your 60 kilohertz of subcarrier spacing. So these are your PRBs, 66, 132, 264, for a particular uh, carrier bandwidth on a particular subcarrier spacing. So in, in actuality, the summary of the thing is that for millimeter wave, we have a separate frequency ranges. All of them are TDD. There is no FTD uh, operation at the moment for millimeter wave. And the question comes, why? Because the amount, the frequency, the high frequency, we need channel responsivity. We need to have the channel information to transmit to the particular user. And for TDD, we have the same channel in terms of frequency. Because if you go to FTD, we have different uh, frequencies for uplink and downlink. And because of the radio propagation conditions, we cannot risk uh, or we do not have the channel estimation techniques right now to give it a proper propagation uh, uh, characteristics. Then comes the latency part. And if you see there's these uh, subcarrier spacings for this 60, 120, 240, the OFDM duration reduces, as you can see in my lecture for 5G and our frame structure, and you can provide a good, very low latency. So millimeter wave might be used as a candidate technology for providing low latency and very high throughput. A case that could be for your uh, video streaming uh, that can be used where you need uh, low latency and you also need a very high quality uh, video for that you would be requiring a very high throughput. So this was a uh, brief overview of 5G millimeter wave and I would be sharing you more things as we continue rollout in 2021 uh, with new 5G technologies and I hope that we will be meeting sooner this time around. Thank you so much. Keep watching, keep sharing and have a nice day. Thank you.